Greetings. In this video, I'll be explaining the forebrain, its structures, and its functions. Let's get started. The forebrain is the largest and most important part of the brain. Its many neural pathways connect with structures in the midbrain and hindbrain to coordinate brain activity. Here you can see the forebrain in the pink, and here you can see how it interacts with the midbrain and hindbrain. The forebrain is a collection of upper level structures that include the hypothalamus, thalamus, and cerebrum, as demonstrated in this diagram here. Together with other structures, the forebrain regulates complex cognitive processes such as learning, memory, and perception, as well as various aspects of emotion and personality. Now I'll explain the first part of the forebrain, the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has a vital role in maintaining the body's internal environment, which is homeostasis, and takes part in many aspects of our behavior. So here in this diagram, you can see where it is in the pink, and it maintains the, bodily, the body's internal environment. So like the temperature of the body, the digestion system, the heart rate, all of it. The main functions of the hypothalamus include regulating the release of hormones from various glands in the body, and influencing behaviors associated with basic biological needs, like hunger, thirst, and sleep. It's also involved in emotions, like anger and fear, as it's part of the limbic system. Now I'll explain the next part of the forebrain, the thalamus. The thalamus filters information from almost all sense receptor sites, except the nose, and then passes it to relevant areas of the brain for further processing. Basically, sense organs, like the eyes, send information to the thalamus, which sends that information to the correct part of the brain to be interpreted. So to demonstrate this, let's say you're looking at the picture of this park, and you're noticing the green tree in front of you. This is sent to the thalamus, and the thalamus identifies it as color and imagery, and sends it to the occipital lobe at the back to be processed. The thalamus constantly filters the large amounts of information coming from sensory receptors, and therefore must choose the more important information to be interpreted by the brain. For example, if you're in danger, good hearing would probably be interpreted as more important than the taste in your mouth, and therefore the thalamus would put an emphasis on interpreting information from the ears rather than the tongue. Now I'll explain the last part of the forebrain. The cerebrum. The cerebrum occupies most of the forebrain and is above and in front of the cerebellum, which is demonstrated in this diagram here. The cerebrum consists of the outer cerebral cortex and masses of neural tissue where neurons receive and process incoming and outgoing information. The cerebrum and its outer cortex are primarily responsible for almost everything we consciously think, feel, and do. The cerebrum and the cerebral cortex is divided into two cerebral hemispheres, one on the left and one on the right, as we can see in this diagram, one and two. Between the two halves, so one half and two halves, there's a narrow gap, here's a narrow gap, that runs from the front to the back called the longitudinal fissure. So right here is a longitudinal fissure, which is the gap. Both cerebral hemispheres are still connected by the corpus callosum, which allows information exchange between the two hemispheres. So the corpus callosum is this part here that's connected, and this allows communication between the two hemispheres. Well, this marks the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And this was created by Simply Explained.